she she understood, but that's the problem with the younger generation now. Um, even some of the people in our generation. Okay, good morning. So today I am going to be working on some things for my podcast. Um, I have two interviews today that I'm really excited about. Um, and then I don't really know what else I'm doing. Okay, y'all, like super side note. Um, I was actually thinking about going from doing daily videos to um, like three videos or two videos a week. Um, but then every time I think to myself like, oh, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna do less videos or whatever. I just think about like my future children watching this and like, <laughs> you know, how can I tell them to, you know, be persistent and like to keep doing something. But then like I only last like a month doing daily videos and like it, I, I feel like it's okay to fall off. But, you know, I don't think I want to make like a concrete decision about like, okay, I'm not gonna do daily videos anymore because I really like doing it. This is like the one thing that I do for myself. Like I do these videos purely because I want to. To my future children, if you're watching this, listen to what I say. I know that. <laughs> I know that I used to hate when my parents used to like, you know, do what I say, not as I do, but like, uh, having one of those moments. That's where we're at. Okay, what did you say again? I was just saying I, I really liked it. Liked what? Whenever you did it. Did what? When like you'll be like bye and then you'll hit the camera. <laughs> and then it will go off. Oh. I love it. And like even um you know, I had noticed but Dion you know, was the one who made the comment yesterday. He was like, Damn, she don't even sign off anymore. <laughs> Dion was mad. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? You all right? She don't. So you had to call and tell me to do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, yeah, because well, it's just I I really like seeing it. So I was just like, but you just said that you don't actually do it. So I I don't know what you were doing. Oh and yeah. Stuff. I mean, I don't know what I was doing either, but I'll start doing it again. Tay's home from work. Tay's home from work. Tay's home. Hey. It is hey. Hey Tay. I know Taylor. Hi. Did, huh. you, did you have a beautiful day? I Was did. it a beautiful day to save lives? It's a beautiful day to save lives. So Tay had a working lunch and he brought me back Carabas. So I have a salad. And this is their um, lobster ravioli. Last year we went up to the school and she she really wanted to do photography mm -hmm. but she have financial issues that don't allow her to have a camera right but she take photography electives and all of that where they teach photography oh really yeah so what uh kevin and i told her was in december we're gonna come back you're gonna present a business plan and if if it's good or whatever will buy you the camera and the lens right so we went back today because december was just so busy january was busy whatever so we went back today and she came in there and she didn't yeah the camera suck like you can't raise it or something when we went there today she did her presentation and we critiqued it and told her that we're gonna give her you know another chance so afterwards i asked her, i said hey be honest you thought you was gonna get a camera and lens today didn't you mm -hmm. and she said yeah and I told her I said no I said you know um, I don't operate like that we don't operate like that um, we're not just gonna give it to you just because you completed something we're gonna give it to you when you do something good right I said and um, if we would have gave you the camera and lens today that would have gave you this false intent that you know you did a good job and we would have been sending you up for failure because the way it works in the real world, you would have presented what you presented today, how you presented it today, and the person would have said, oh, well, thank you for your time, and we'll be in touch, and you never would have heard back from them. Right. So what I'm telling you is you got to, one, be better at presenting. Right. I, I could care. practice that. Yeah, I could care less. I even asked her after her presentation, I said, how many times have you presented this information? How many times she said? And she was like, well, I've looked at it, you know, over and over again. I said, no, how many times have you presented it? Mm -hmm. You have to present what you're going to say. I said, first off, you reading off the board. I don't, like, you lose the connection between your audience when you do that. Right. 
I've done it many times where I've completed a presentation three weeks in advance and I went through, I uh, practiced it, I did it for my wife, I then asked her what kind of questions would she have, I would go back and add that information in, I redo it over again, then I submit it, then I'm ready to do it. I said, right. but I know you have not done any of that. Practice it, yeah. I said, you haven't. So, um, she, she understood, but that's the problem with the younger generation now. Um, even some of the people in our generation, they're so used to teachers giving them a grade because they followed the rubric. Truth of the matter is, when you get out in the real world, they're not going to give you a rubric. A rubric right. Mm -hmm. They're not going to say, hey, these are the questions that you need to ask when you come in for the interview tomorrow. When you get there, they're going to ask you questions and expect you to know the answers to it. Right. You didn't practice. And I will give T.I. The, the quote for this, but T.I. said something that made so much sense. Preparation is the antidote to fear. You sit up here and I could see your nervousness, your fear of presenting to us. But if you would have been prepared, you wouldn't have had to be nervous. It, it wouldn't matter. Or the nervousness would have went away when she started getting into the group of her presentation. If you're prepared, nerves don't come out. It, it just don't. Um, that ain't true. Beyonce says she's nervous every time she steps on the stage. She prepared. Not, not well enough. Um, you, can, you, can be, you can be nervous the first like 10 seconds and then get over it once you get in the groove. Because right. you, you know you know you prepare. And that's right. what, like you said, it'll change it from being feared. Now, what I'm scared for, I'm prepared. I know this. Yeah. I used to be scared teaching even though I knew the material forwards and backwards. I, I get nervous. So you got you that stuff in the back of my, uh, in the back of my. Right, that is my trench coat. Leave it right where it's at. Who are you talking to? You and you need to put it back before I lose my cool. Who are you gonna lose your cool on? Because yeah. I ain't finna be me. But um, this video is not sponsored by Jewel. <laughs> if you're if you don't get nervous, you're not human. I'm sorry. Every human being get nervous. I don't care how prepared you are. But what I mean by prep pre or what I think T.I. meant by preparation is the antidote to fear. And I like to throw in nervousness is if you're prepared, that nervousness don't show. Right. You know, there's there's a difference than having butterflies in your stomach and your stomach tightened up because you're you're afraid, you're fe you're fearful or you're nervous. But there's a difference than when you start speaking and you can hear it through your voice. Right. We cooking dinner or is this dinner? Are you cooking dinner? I don't know. It's four forty-seven. That's what I'm asking. Is this dinner or not dinner? Yeah, I'm gonna be hungry by seven. We need to do one on finance. Uh, a video on finance. I'm not a financial guru. I'm not a financial planner because uh, they don't make money. But uh, I took my strategy. I told it to Kevin, and this man has saved six figures in the last two years. Saved in his savings account. Thanks to your strategy. Now I will give a disclaimer on Kevin though. That man took my strategy to another level because he went and got three extra jobs on top of his primary job and saved all his checks from his three extra jobs. So, well, Kevin is an exceptional human yeah, being. Everybody's not going to do that. But you can save a lot of money. Yeah, you it. did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Gosh. What are you doing? So, you have to, like, so this is what I do for you. No, bro. I don't want to hear all that. I want to know what are you doing. Why are you reading? The 25 sales habits of highly successful salespeople. What I was trying to tell you. But why are you reading it though? Because I, I'm reading a book a month. <laughs> I'm reading a book a month. When did you start that book? Like a couple, like an hour ago maybe. It's been an hour, huh? Since I started reading the book. And today is what? Listen. What's today? January 31st. So you just picked up a book on the last day of the month <laughs> because you committed to reading a book a month. Now, I want to talk, but we can't because you wait till the last day, the last hour. Listen, I still have like two hours left in today. To read a book. Yes. Exactly what I'm trying to say. Why did you pick that book? Because it's short. It's only 100 pages. So I know I can finish it. This mother lover here is finna start reading Dr. Seuss just so she can keep her commitments 
No, they have to be business books though. Although Dr. Seuss books have. I was gonna lessons. say, what you trying to say about Dr. Yeah, Dr. Seuss? Dr. Seuss books be like it's life lessons in there. It's life changing in there. I will say that. To our future kids, it's ten o'clock. Your mama ain't finna feed, ain't finna finish that book in two hours. Yes, I am. So I'm, I'm not finna let her. And I'm, it's only hundred pages. I'm, I'm not Who finna let her. Hmm. All right, I'll be done for YouTube.